In October 1968, members of Stanford SDS and other members of the Stanford community nailed a demand to the door of the Board of Trustees office, which I think was actually down a couple doors here. I don't think it's the trustees have an office anymore. And this building might have been unoccupied at the time. I can't quite remember. There had been a fire here for some reason. <laughs> I, <laughs> and I had nothing to do with that one either. The 1968 demand, which led to the formation of the April 3rd movement, was we, the members of Stanford SDS, and concerned members of the Stanford community demand that Stanford University, its wholly owned subsidiary, the Stanford Research Institute, and all members of the university community immediately halt all military and economic projects and operations concerned with Southeast Asia. We didn't win on all of it, but we got a whole lot done. So we thought as those of us who participated in that event returned to campus after 40 years, that it would make sense for us to provide our support for today's students and other members of the Stanford community that are challenging the return of a war criminal to the Stanford faculty, Condoleezza Rice. You're here. Yeah. And I, and we, are at, we are asking alumni, people who worked here back when we were here, to sign this petition. It says, we the undersigned students, faculty, staff, alumni, and other concerned members of the Stanford community believe that high officials of the US government, including our former provost, current political science professor, and Hoover Institution senior fellow, Condoleezza Rice, should be held accountable for any serious violations of the law, including ratified treaties, statutes, and or the US Constitution, through investigation and, if the facts warrant, prosecution by the appropriate legal authorities. <laughs> this petition is available online for people to sign. It's what antiwar.stanford.edu antiwar.stanford.edu. So President Hennessy, if you're in there, <laughs> or you're watching, take some leadership, sign the petition. I'd like to introduce Marjorie Cohn, one of my cohorts from back in the days, the April 3rd movement. Margie is now president of the National Lawyers Guild, and she's going to talk a little bit about, about what these issues mean. There is, pri there is prima facie evidence that Condoleezza Rice authorized torture. Torture is a war crime under U.S. law. In addition, there is evidence that Condoleezza Rice participated in a campaign, a concerted campaign, to create a false um, connection between uh, weapons of mass destruction and Saddam Hussein. Down, up, up. You can't. It's not amplified. Okay. Yes. Um, in, in the fall of 2002, Condoleezza Rice began talking with other members of the administration, began talking in the media about the mushroom cloud that was going to, to cover us and our allies if Saddam Hussein was not removed. And this led to the illegal and unnecessary invasion of Iraq where more than 4,500 Americans have died and some one million Iraqis. It is an illegal war of aggression. It violates the UN Charter, which is a treaty we've ratified and therefore part of US law. Condoleezza Rice, in July of 2002, authorized waterboarding on Abu Zubaida. Waterboarding has long been considered torture under U.S. law, and torture is a, is a war crime under the U.S. war crime statute. And 
those who participated in the torture and abuse, who authorized it, and who gave legal cover for it are all liable for war crimes under the, the U.S. War Crimes Act and the very well-established doctrine of command responsibility, which says that, that commanders all the way up the chain of command to the commander-in-chief are liable for war crimes even if they didn't personally carry out the torture, be, if they authorized it or if they knew or should have known that it would be committed and they did nothing to stop or prevent it. So by nailing this, uh, this petition to the door, we are asking that Condoleezza Rice and other war criminals, including, um, including, including John Yu, who is at our, our uh, rival school, Berkeley, on the faculty of the, of the um, law school, and who is the author, along with Jay Bybee, a judge on the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, of some of the most egregious torture memos, which explain to the administration how they could get away with breaking the law, be investigated and prosecuted for war crimes. In addition, by nailing this petition to the door, we are asking the university to sever its ties with the war criminal Condoleezza Rice, who has absolutely no business teaching, being a tenured professor and teaching and doing research at Stanford University because she participated in the conspiracy to commit an illegal war and to commit war crimes. And this is not an issue. This is not an issue of academic freedom any more than calling for the dismissal of John Yu from the Berkeley Law Faculty is an issue of academic freedom. Professors are free to espouse radical views in their classrooms or write in scholarly articles about radical views. That's a far cry from being hired by the administration to advise it on how to break the law and get away with it. That is not academic freedom. So in conclusion, the Stanford 40th, reunion, 40th anniversary reunion of the Stanford anti-war movement, which has been going on all weekend, is delighted to join together with Stanford students against the war in calling for a war criminal free campus and investigations and prosecutions. And we hope to continue this pressure until Condoleezza Rice is banned from the campus and she and her other fellow war criminals are tried, convicted, and punished for their crimes. Thank you. Margie, I never, well, I never finished Stanford in, in, in two ways, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was not allowed to register in the spring of 69 because I went into a meeting of the Stanford Board of Trustees and I didn't get into Claire, but I got a Coke. And I was never, the crimes that we were accused of, that many of us were kicked out of school, arrested back 40 years ago, are nothing compared to the crimes that Condi Rice and her cohorts in Washington took part in. And we just have to, you know, for the reunion, well, it, the, one of the pronouns is wrong, but we've been using the, 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 uh, fray, the uh, graphic from the AEL sit-in, Applied Electronics Lab sit-in. I sit in, you sit in, he or she sits in, they kill. We just have to bring it, compare what we did, what we were accused of being violent, destructive and all that, with what these people have done, the torture, the death. Uh, it's not comparable. So uh, Margie, will you join me? In, all right. How in, about uh, current students also? Yes. If, yeah. if, if anyone wants to volunteer, yeah. they don't. No, no, if he doesn't, that's fine. That's fine. This is our, this is our gig. Yeah. OK. You want me to hold it and you nail it? Yeah, just don't cover the part that says building. Okay. By the way, it's, it's interesting. This is, uh, they still have a wood door here. I don't understand it. <laughs>